Anna. There he is. Awesome. Hi, uh, Hi Mary, how's it going? My, my closest Hawaii shirt on in honor of. Uh, hey. It's floral. You're doing good. I'm, I, I'm, I'm winging it. I'm winging it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we have a whole bunch of people that have registered for tonight. Well over, awesome. well over 150. So um, I'm going to, awesome. I really want to give them another second or two to, to get logged in. If we can just uh, chit chat for a second, there's a bunch of familiar faces over here. Some new ones, probably your fans and yeah, yeah. Uh, a couple of people tuning in internationally and who are staying up even chat. later. Hey, Ernie, San Fran, how's it going? Like Is that it. your guy? I don't you know. know. Ernie? I don't know if I know Ernie. Not yet. Cool. <laughs> but, John yeah, Hughes is joining us. Out. John Hughes is joining us. John Hughes has been a V1 family member for, God, probably 25 years. He'll probably put a member in the chat. I get to see him next week. He's a master. Yo. He's awesome. Yeah, man. And I got a bunch of team, a couple of team members over here. Marcella will definitely send us a good question. She's always good for that. Mike from Portland, Oregon, on the range, 19 years. John Hughes has been with us for 19 years. Okay, I exaggerated a little. 19 years is pretty, pretty good. <laughs> pretty good for the, for the family member. And I will share that you've been with us for just under a year, not even a full year. Not Love even that. a full year. I've I've been using V1 products ever since I started teaching with video and whatnot, but just jumped on board with the force plate and body track. And yeah, I love it. Absolutely That's love awesome. it. Awesome. All right. So while they, while they check in, we got Jay Perkins. Hey, Jay from Bel Air. Uh, Chip takes hey, Jay, care of up? him up there. Yep. And uh, all right, I'm going to get started. I'm going to do my little intro. I don't know if you saw my script. A um, couple of announcements I want to get through, and then we'll get into your good stuff, and hopefully we'll have all of our golf pros logged in by then. So, Chris, if it's okay, I'm going to get it started. Um, sure. Good evening, golf friends. Aloha, and welcome to Tuesday Traces. It's evening hours on the mainland, but still sunny and just after lunchtime in Hawaii, where Chris Armanini is taking a quick break to join us. Uh, today, we are excited to welcome Black Cat Ventures to the team. Black Cat Ventures is the golf technology fund founded by Michael Jordan and managed by his partners, Ken Whalen and Darren May, the GM and golf coach at the Grove 23 down in Palm Beach, Florida. They will be investors and collaborators in helping V1 bring new products and services to the market. V1 Sports is the first company in which Black Cat Ventures has chosen to invest. In other exciting news, the V1 Sports Summer Software Summit at the Butch Harmon Academy at the Floridian is less than a week away. If you have not registered, you come see me and Kelly and John Hughes, please register. The link is going to be posted in the chat window. I'm sure my girls will take care of that for us. We will offer a V1 Master Certification, PGA and LPGA credits. Um, we're going to have a ton of fun, share lots of exciting information, and we are hoping to have a pretty cool keynote speaker. Uh, please feel free to shoot me a note if you would like, uh, if you have questions or if you want a copy of my coupon code. Okay, about tonight, welcome to all the folks that have registered and have joined us via the Zoom webinar link. And welcome to all my friends tuning into the V1 Sports Facebook Live channel. Do not hesitate to ask questions throughout the night. If you have anything to do with junior golf, Chris definitely is the person to ask. Um, I highly recommend sending all questions over. He is a wealth of knowledge when it comes to teaching kiddos. The recording of tonight's webinar will be available on the V1 Sports YouTube channel in a few days after Anna edits. I promise you'll have it before the end of the week um, and we will post it there. If you are registered for the Zoom, you will automatically get a copy of that link. So you don't have to ask me. We'll send you an email as soon as she edits um, and gets all of the good information compiled in the V1 video on our YouTube channel. Okay, V1 Sports is a 26-year-old company and the leader in delivering video analysis, instruction solutions, and ground force technologies to athletes and coaches around the world. In those 26 years, we have supported over 4 million lessons and 10,000 V1-affiliated golf coaches. We are passionate about supporting your golf and now baseball businesses. I am Andy Von C. I am the Southeast Regional Sales Manager for V1 Sports, born, raised, and based in beautiful Charleston, South Carolina. It's a pretty exciting time in our industry right now, and I couldn't be more grateful to be a 
able to provide V1 sports tools to golf instructors and golf students. I say all the time, golf is good. And that is true. Um, okay, I'm super passionate about hosting this Tuesday Traces webinar every other week. I beg my pros that I'm super impressed with to um, do this with me. And I've been begging Chris Armanini for a long time. Um, this is going to be a fun one. I love picking their brains, sharing what they're good at, and uh, just bragging about our family members because we have some pretty good ones in our, in our collection. Okay, this brings me to my buddy, Chris Armanini. Chris purchased his V1 pressure mat in November of this past year, so he has not even had the technology for a full year. Chris, welcome to Tuesday Traces. I realize that most of the golf world is really busy, but you've taken that to a whole new level. And uh, you're literally like in the middle of your day. And I really appreciate mm -hmm. you taking a break to join me no between problem. lessons, between lunch, between water breaks. Uh, we can see that you're in absolutely in beautiful Hawaii, kind of sitting right in front of where you're teaching, which is awesome. That's quite a view. Not that a is not view. a fake Zoom background, guys. That is actual Hawaii. It's beautiful. <laughs> so one what more a, time. What a beautiful place. I love Fair it. out for you guys. <laughs> yeah, beautiful day out here today. Thank you, Mandy, for having me out. I'm really looking forward to getting talking a little bit about what I have to share um, for the force plates and for body track and V1. I absolutely love the products that we're working with. Um, funny thing is, I didn't even know that was 26 years, but I remember being a junior golfer myself at about 10 years old and looking at the V1 software and be like, this was the catalyst of swing motion back then. And I still think it is. I think it's still top of the line great mechanics, great, great technology and love what you guys do. So thanks for having me on. Thank you for that. Thank you. I'm proud of that too. I'm proud of our team, I'm proud of where we have been, where we've come and the support that we can give folks that are new to the family like you. And of course, my buddy, John, that's been here for 19 years. I love that. All right. A little bit about Chris. Uh, Chris was born and raised on the Island of Maui, where he played successful high school and college golf. Coach Chris is uh, TPI certified, did a lot of really cool things with TPI on the island, was a first there. I'm sure Chris McGinley would be happy to hear that. Um, he, okay, he is also a U.S. kids certified coach. Um, Chris is coach for my Maui Prep Academy High School and the Intermediate School Golf Team. Um, he does a lot with juniors. While Chris was teaching at Kapalua, he was honored with the 2019 Aloha Section Youth Development Leader Award. And Chris has since moved to, help me with the pronunciation so I don't totally butcher it. Ka'anapali. Ka'anapali. It's, it's tricky. Course. It's got to pronounce every single vowel in there. Ka'anapali. Ka okay, now <laughs> I can do that now that I know how to pronounce it. Okay, they have a stellar reputation for junior golf participation, which is probably one of the reasons that um, Chris moved over there. What a wonderful place to call a job site. Chris, can you tell us about that? I specifically wanted to ask you about your award um, the 2019 Aloha Section Youth Development Leader Award. Tell us a little bit, mm -hmm. a little bit about that. So um, it's every year they, they award the uh, best, the top producing uh, junior teacher in the state. Um, last year was 2019. Um, I was surprised with that, that I was, I was at Kapalua at the time teaching up there and uh, just have a passion for growing the game and really kind of taking on the ownership that it's my turn to pass the torch on to these junior golfers as a lot of golf pros did in, in my respect to me. So um, really, really fun getting involved with the kids, really fun getting them out there playing. Um, since COVID's come through, um, we've got a lot of new golfers come out and a lot of new junior golfers as well. And it's great to see these pack of, well, let's, I call them my surfing groms. They come out, there's six of them. They, they're all big surf, um, surf competition type of kids. And they're like, well, when the waves are flat, let's play some golf. And they're having a great time out here. Um, football wasn't a thing last year. So we got a lot of football players, baseball, soccer. It's just great having all these athletes coming out. And it's just a lot of fun getting them really stoked on golf. It's, it's a lot of fun. It's cool, isn't it? Boy. Oh, my I, God. So much fun. I love the industry, but it's fun when we have all these new young kiddos joining mm -hmm. the the ranks. And then, I, you know, young families and they're bringing their parents and their kids. It's, it's really, really a good time. Um, okay, so let's see. Uh, before we get too deep into technology, um, please share a little bit about your golf path in Hawaii. You definitely start, you're born and raised mm -hmm. there, got some cool awards, you've been passionate about junior golf, um, you've always been in Hawaii? Pretty much. Um, traveled to um, Santa Clara University for a little bit for college, tried walking on the college team there, didn't make it, wasn't, wasn't good enough, I guess, traveled back home made it to the Hawaii Hilo team, division two, and uh, played for three years there. And then once I graduated, moved back home to Maui and started my class A apprenticeship. 
Um, once I was done with that in 2016, it's just been going for it hundred percent, getting as many kids out there as we can. And then, yeah, we get a lot of tourists and a lot of adults coming through as well, but uh, my niche is definitely with those junior golfers. I'm having way too much fun with them. We've got over a hundred kids right now in the program and um, yeah, we're hoping to add more. <laughs> awesome. Okay. So you guys, a little, a little, um, little known fact or a little behind the scenes secret. We always do a test with our traces guests. We do it so that we make sure the audio is right. And so that everyone looks good and that we can screen share properly. So when we got off our test with Chris, we both called Haley and I called each other. We said, that might be the sweetest man. He is so sweet. What he's doing <laughs> to grow golf is, is like, it's such a feel good thing. We just loved it. We fell in love with you and how much fun you were to talk to. So one of the other things about the test is that I always ask the pros, what is one thing that no one would ever guess? No one knows about you because I find it interesting, the answers, and then how that relates to golf. So I find it really interesting that you are the sweetest golf pro on the planet. And everybody thinks that about you. I know your students do as well. However, your hidden talent happens to be kind of badass a little bit. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, back in my uh, high school, <laughs> college days, and in addition to golfing, I was um, I always liked martial arts. I've grown up doing martial arts as a kid with Aikido, Taekwondo. So really got into jujitsu and um, been doing a lot of jujitsu, and then even did a little MMA fighting as well. So um, yeah, it's it's a great little mixture. It's definitely on the complete opposite spectrum of golf, where you're a little bit more intense, a little bit more in your face type of deal, but. Um, definitely giving me a lot of balance, a lot of body control. Um, I, I encourage all of my parents to get their kids involved in some sort of martial arts, some sort of extracurricular sport other than golf, because it builds more balance in the body than just swinging at a golf club one way. You're going to be a lot more asymmetrical that way in the long run. But the more that we can get the kids out there playing and incorporating golf as well, their second medium. And then from there, when they get to that high school age and they're like having a great time golfing, it's like, hey, let's specialize into this type of deal versus I was never a fan of the um, specialization at a young age where you have the I call them helicopter parents where they're just standing there and watching the kid and forcing them to practice where the kid you can see in their face they're not having fun mm -hmm. it's all about fun you got to have fun with the kids the kids got to have fun if they're going to want to keep doing this otherwise it's just going to be something where yeah and when they're 15 14 they're just going to be burnt out and never want to do it again and um, that is definitely not my goal. My goal is to get as many golfers out there as we can. And a hey, uh, out of a hundred, if we get five out of a hundred to go to college or 10 out of a hundred to go to college and, but the other 90 are playing golf for the rest of their life. I still feel like I want as a golf instructor, keeping them out there playing. So that's the Heck main yeah. thing is having fun. I love it. I love it. So, and, and of course the background in martial arts is definitely giving you discipline, body awareness, positions, right? I mean, mm -hmm. got to be a great thing to pull from. Just found it super interesting that you <laughs> are well-trained in multiple, multiple arts, uh, martial arts. Okay. Luckily, I never so, had to use it. Never had to use it outside the gym. Okay, so good. Well, Mike, you haven't thing. had my kids. You haven't taught my kids. Yet, so. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. They're sweet. They're sweet. Okay. So let's talk about those juniors and, and then we want to see some traces. Um, you told me that you usually expect 12 kids at a time in your junior camps. What happened, what happened this year? <laughs> well, this year went from 12 to over 100. I kind of spilled the beans early, but yeah, it's it's awesome to see the amount of kids just come in just in the flux that, I mean, every sport was closed down during the year because of COVID and golf was the one safe thing to do. And it, it's great to get them out there. We got a junior league um, of the 100. We got 56 of them to participate in the junior league this year where it's a two-person scramble. It's a great introduction to um, golf, competitive golf for the junior golfers. I'd highly recommend getting your facility or your kids involved in that. Um, it's a great, great thing. And um, yeah, we got a, over 100. That's just, it's, How do you manage 100 kids? That's crazy. Did you tough. need 100 it's, more pressure mats? Do I need to send you another map? Maybe. maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, it's, it's, there's a lot of, um, my, my Excel sheets almost maxed out, um, keeping track on who's where and what program. Um, and then also, I mean, just, just keeping the, the kids in, engaged is, is a tough thing, but we get them in groups of five or six. That way we put them into friends that are friends or same skill yep. level so that when we break up into games, which that's big time of my, my teaching is through games. We got to learn through games, trick them into learning type of deal. Yep. And um, once we break up into games, they'll be more competitive against each other, playing more or less um, of the same skill level, same age level type of deal. But yeah, about awesome. five, five, just five to one, six to one. It's very manageable. Love it. Very love manageable. it. All 
right, so tell us about those camps. What technology are you using? You're teaching outside. I can see you've got pressure mat and mobile, mobile, Viva and mobile. Mm -hmm. um, yep. You're teaching all the, you know, lots of kids. Do you put them all on the pressure mat? I'm sure you're filming of videos of all of yep. them. We do a lot of videos, but I mean, they always want to see what the new toy is, right? So we put them on the new toy. It's like, ooh, look at this. It blows up. There's red, there's blue, there's numbers here, there's numbers there. And honestly, it's just them to kind of take a look at it and see what we're looking at. Do I coach the six-year-olds with the with the pressure mat? No, it's just more for them to kind of look at and for them to kind of, but when once you get to a high school level, which we'll get to in a little bit, I definitely get into the high school level with them and talk about force and the way we're producing force and and that type of stuff. So um, yeah, really, cool really love getting the kids on there. Yeah, like yeah. I, I can imagine a six-year-old that may have never held a golf club and you need to talk about, okay, let's talk about right foot, put weight on that foot, left foot. Now let's put it on our toes. And the, the visual mm -hmm. of that is pretty cool. Just doing right. that. Okay. So now we can have a conversation about where our weight or should be or what is doing. Exactly. Our, so love exactly. that. Exactly. The, the feel versus real. It's kind of, uh, does it, does it feel like this or is it really what's going on? And it's really important when you're using that pressure mat to have the that video with it. Um, because if you're looking at pressure traces and you're not looking at a video next to it, it's going to be really hard to distinguish what's really going on in that pressure trace. So I think it's, I think it's, very smart that D1 partnered up with body tracking is all more or less together as one now because well, you wouldn't be able to use it without the video. It just wouldn't make any sense at all. So, yep. That's yep. Good. We love, we love giving that data to you so you can give it to your students in an easy to understand way. So let's see it. Can you, can you do some shares? Can we see some, yep. some traces? Can you tell us about some of your students where they started before, whatever you, whatever you want to see. I know we're about to dive into some of your Definitely. Um, Let me jump over here. Let me take over the screen. All right. Microphone's still working. Yep. Sounds great. All right. Let's go over to one. All right. So this is the 100% reason why we need to be looking at video. Whoops. How to get rid of this thing. There we go. Why we should be looking at video and not just the pressure chase here. So just look. Yeah, pressure chase let's just try to guess what we did here so i mean on the back swing we're guessing that we kind of loaded up into the heel area or swing centered more or less that right heel gets loaded right toe gets loaded then all of a sudden boom everything disappears wait what just happened there and then boom we reappear what is going on i know right so it's like what is going on which honestly it's not even a golf swing <laughs> All right, so what we're doing right now, oops, let's see in there, is a basically a medicine ball throw here. So I was up at my trainer's house the other day, and I'm like, hey, let's put this on V1 and see what it looks like on the force traces. And loading up right over here. He's working on maintaining my posture. I'm going down, throwing that medicine ball hard into the ground. Right there, I'm airborne right now. Yep. And then feet retrace really back on there landing nice and balanced all right but basically i mean we can use this technology not just for golf swing but taking a look at when i'm lifting weights am i loading up on my right side or am i loading up on my left side or am i balanced that type of stuff so it's a great piece of technology here all right so golf swing that's so cool that's what we came here for right we came here for that, that's so cool though that you're using it with your <laughs> trainer i love that you're right it's great. Yes. There's, multi, there's more than one reason to use this. I mean, I see you guys use it with baseball. I mean, yep. all that type of stuff's coming in. I mean, why not use it in the gym too, to see if I'm dominant on my right side, if I need to get my weight more on my left side to feel more balanced or whatever it may be, you know? Chris, I had a client one time ask me what the weight, what, how, how much weight you could put on the pressure mat. And I said, well, I mean, a lot. what kind of question is that? You know, <laughs> I, I had to ask, right? Well, it was hundreds mm -hmm. and hundreds of pounds, but the question came from, a weightlifting coach and he wanted mm. people to literally lift heavy dumbbells and walk and look at the pressure on their feet anyway i digress but fascinating that ties right in i love it that would be so i'm cool. interested in that being tpi and looking at the way the body moves i mean lifting weights is just part of it yep all right awesome. but anyways let's go back okay, to the, back to golf back to golf back to golf all right so here we go we got an incoming freshman here christopher he's about five foot nine he's a big kid he's already hitting about 300 yards out there almost out driving coach not quite yet <laughs> um, but we're working hard on his wedges in the last three months or so. And look at the pressure trace here, that yellow line over there. We want to kind of focus it on that left side, trying to keep it on that left foot there. Um, 
kind of, I call it kind of honeycombing over there, or kind of just swirling around. And we'll see that, ah, you know what, let's draw some lines on it. We're on V1. Let's draw some Heck lines yeah. on us. There's shaft plane, there's spine angle. And these are the main three lines I like to draw on um, when I'm instructing here, one shaft plane, two spine angle, and one basically about an inch or so off your butt, just to see if there's any extension going on. So as we go back in the backswing, He's a little outside, but you notice how he's staying nice and centered here. By mm -hmm. this point here, our, about a month or two ago, we would have been heavy loaded on the back foot. All right. right now we're still 50-40 on the front, and we're increasing pressure forward. And notice how his hip stays behind that vertical line. That's a very good position. Yep. Retracing down, swing plane. Looks great. Shafts matching up, and then we're rotating around that. All right, so the main thing was for him was that I wanted to stay about 50 to 60% on that lead foot, which we do, right? That whole time we're staying up right about the, mo the most we got back was uh, 55, 45. Mm -hmm. But then we're trying to re put that pressure forward at impact and finish nice and balanced on that lead heel. And that's always a great place. Trail toe and lead heel is always a good balanced position to finish at. Awesome, 81% in the heel. Hey, do me a favor, uh, Chris. I'm not sure mm -hmm. how many, go, go back to that video do, real right. quick. And I, I'm not sure how many people have never seen uh, a pressure graph. So do you mind blowing that up just a little bit? And while we totally. talk, guys, um, Chris is going to reference a whole bunch of numbers. Right now, we're seeing 65% mm -hmm. of the weight on the yep. left foot. Um, yep. And that's what he's referencing. So he's referencing those, those gray numbers in the gray bar. That's what he's watching. Super important that he wants a certain number there at impact. Um, but right. I just want to point out those gray numbers. That's what you'll hear Chris refer to. And that's what he's watching throughout the golf string because it is in playing in sync with the swing, obviously. All right. Sorry. Thank you. I, I like to point that out if people don't know where you're, where you're gathering that data. Sorry. Definitely. And it's great. I mean, it, it needs to be with the video, like you're saying, because it's a time and I mean, it's basically time sensitive. So at this position right here on the top of the backswing, right right here, right, you can see we're at 55-45, we're starting to transfer the weight forward back into that 60-40, right? We get a little bit of toe interaction here just because we're pushing off that toe side, we're getting a little bit of more 85-15 on the front, but then let's freeze it one second right there. So now we can see on the left side in the gray numbers, we got 64 and 36. So that's 64% of the weight in the toe, and 36% of the weight in the heel. But here's the deal. Notice how his hips haven't extended. They haven't gone past the orange line. They're basically still in position. Yep. Right, so that's telling me that, well, wait a minute. He didn't get his weight into his ball of foot. He's pushing off the ball of foot, All right? He's getting his weight more around into the heel. You can see, kind of see how it sits into that. Yep. In that heel area there, right? So. Another reason why we need the video to make sense of these pressure traces is because if this right here, if we would have froze it in this position right here, you might have thinking that he was kind of on his tippy toes on his left yep. foot. Yep. But with the video, you see that, hey, he's in a great position. He's mm -hmm. nice and flexed in the hips still. He's not extended. He's rotating through. Shaft plane's perfect. Club delivery's nice. He's rotating with his body through. Nice. About Love two it. months ago, he was getting that club way too far inside and have a little bit of a flippy draw, which was having him miss the greens a lot from 50 yards away. So we worked hard. Hey, Chris, on that. wait, really real good. quick before you, oh. real, real quick. This student huh? is clearly a great golfer. I mean, he clearly. is. He's what? he's a basketball player, first of all. Let's just put it out there that he was a swim. Actually, let's, let's rewind even more. He did karate, black belt karate when he was 12. Then he's been playing basketball his whole life. Um, and a little bit of swimming too. And in the last two and a half years, he started playing golf and has 100% jumped into it, loves it. That's all he can think about. Even when he's playing basketball, he goes, coach, I, I, when I'm on the basketball court, I want to play golf. And uh, having your dad being the basketball coach, is kind of tough. It's kind of, you got to kind of do what you got to do. Right. But um, <laughs> Golf he, will um, always he, be there. He can always play golf. Golf will so always really be there and he's loving it. Curious. So what did you give this student? Did you talk to him about the trace? Did you guys have a conversation about, I mean, obviously his body's great position. Yes. Did you yes, he's, show he's like a, what you, what you just gave us, you, you had a conversation with him. He's a high schooler. He, he mm -hmm. totally gets it. Right. I'm just curious right. to what you talked to him about to get him here. Um, 
So to get him here, I mean, what we worked on was trying to feel where the scent, where his pressure was. Um, he was getting the club a little too far inside and that was coming, like he was getting more of that, that Z look where we're getting healed to toe, really, really big move. Um, but what we worked on was just kind of, we did a flamingo drill, which actually, let me, let me jump out of here and I can show you guys what that drill is. It's awesome. a great drill that, let's stop that. Oops. Are we good? All right, we're good. Cool. So a flamingo drill would... Well, I always start off with, what do you know about flamingos, Mandy? Well, I know that they have tall legs and they stand on one. Skinny legs. They stand Skinny on legs. one, right? Stand on one, did yep. You, did you know that they're only pink if they have krill in their diet? If they don't have know. krill, they're actually like an off-white off color. I didn't know one of my that. One of my fourth graders told me that, so I wouldn't expect you to know that. Don't worry about it. Okay. But anyways, <laughs> so flamingo drill. Flamingo drill. We're going to get onto our lead foot, our left foot, or for right-handers, our right foot. And our back foot's gonna be in line. Let me get this down a little bit lower here. We're gonna get right on our tippy toe of our back foot. Basically, it's putting all of the weight, 90% or so, on that lead foot, right? Kind of in this manner right here. Yep. Right. And just to start off with, we wanna just do some half swings just to feel the balance, right? Yep. And if we're feeling pretty good, we're gonna hit that same spot again. And then as we get better and more adventurous, we're gonna to start to make bigger swings. But notice how my pressure basically stays nice and centered here. If I had my V1 on right now, my mat on, it would show that the weight is basically staying centered on that lead foot. I'm not adding pressure into that backside, which is a big no-no. We don't like that. Mm -hmm. We don't like mm -hmm. to see that. So a good, nice balance position on that lead foot. We got probably 80% there, 20% on the tippy toes. And we're trying to take pressure off of the tippy toes as we go through. Stay nice and balanced there. Love it's it. a good one that we worked on with Chris a bunch, who is the student in the videos, getting that, um, that lead foot a little bit more interacted, a little more stable. Um, that way there he could turn around it and get, let's say, more crisp contact with those wedges versus getting a little spooky. Awesome. Love it. Um, Anna, please snip that out of this recording and let's put a flamingo drill out there and let's make sure Jim Alterano yeah. gets it. And Chris Armanini gets credit for it. One of my favorites. I love it. I'm going to get on my mat here in a minute. Practice that. That's very good. Go. Very good. Cool. Very good. Let's, okay. um, any, any Let's questions on just a distance wedge, 65 yards. That's kind of what I covered first with Christopher there. Um, we really want to kind of keep that weight centered on that lead foot. We don't want a lot of shifting going on here. Um, get more consistent there. We don't need a full body turn is what it is. Really. It's a distance wedge, All right? Three, for him, I think it was about three quarter swing. And um, yeah, it's just a great feeling of keeping that weight kind of tight knit on that lead side and rotating into that heel. Isn't it cool how you can use the mat and show people, okay, shift and move and do exaggerated and then stay right. still, but move the pressure, right? And you can like, you can whip, right? You can move pressure. So that's like such a great thing to do when you mm -hmm. say you don't want to shift too much well that's easy to, to right. get through to somebody with the mat right okay like exaggerate mm -hmm. that's shifting that's moving now don't do that but you can still right. move pressure right you can still right. you could never do that or see that or talk to it without a mat I, I just find it fascinating it was it I mean when I was a kid growing up no one talked about force pressure or anything like that it was just kind of I understood that it happened somewhere in there but there was nothing measurable nothing to talk about but now I mean it's great to just bring this thing up here and say hey look at look at this graph here and see where it's right. going on yeah awesome okay cool. let's see another trace let me jump in another one here so we'll go let's pull out like a let's pull out like a seven iron little baby draw in there nice all right so he's got the classic little x motion there where he gets a little airborne with his feet and I absolutely love it um, he's got a lot of power for a ninth grader. Like I said, he's almost out driving coach, which I might have another year with him where I can still out drive him. Let's draw <laughs> some lines on him again. Okay. All right. So shaft plane, hip to ear, that spine angle, and then one right on the butt there. That's going to show ex any extension going on. All right. So trace that line up. We worked hard on squaring up the face, which looks great right there. Mm-hmm. I notice how he's staying on that spine angle. He does like to get down after it. Again, he's a basketball player. He likes to jump. All right, so 
as we're loading forward, he slots it just a tiny bit inside, but he's got a really good move on the way through to exit up and out. And then finishes nice and balanced on that lead flip there. Yep. All right. But let's Did take a look at it. Did he come off the ground? Did he come off the ground? Ever so slightly. He doesn't do it as much with his irons. You'll definitely see it with his driver when we get there, but right here. Yep. See how that trace goes back? Yeah. Right. Yep. Right I can see it. Right there. Right there. Yep. Right yep. there. Yep. Which, if again, if you're just looking at the pressure mat, you're like, okay, cool. Awesome. How's this going? All right. So he goes to the back, back foot. He loads it up. Then he goes to the toe. He pushes off the toe. So his weight just went from back foot to front foot. And then his weight goes back foot again and then go right back to the front foot. And you're like, wait a minute. This is just way <laughs> too much going on. So let me scratch my head for a little bit. But what's really going on here is he's loading up into that trail heel, right? As he initiates into that downswing, he pushes off that heel. And at the same time, he's pushing into that lead toe. That lead toe gets involved. You see how it's lighting up there? We're at 82% pressure front, 18 back. That's just because how hard he's pushing off that lead toe. That back foot's starting to come off ever so slightly. And then this is where his foot gets airborne on his front side. So pressure obviously has to go backwards, right? That's the only yep. thing touching the mat right now, right? Yep. So pressure goes backwards and then right away goes right back to the front heel. Yep. All right, which is so, that balanced position that we always want to finish in. Yeah, so Chris, I've done 48 Tuesday traces. This, you're my mm -hmm. 48. And cool. we, we've, we, I know, right? So we've talked about this and mm -hmm. people coming off the ground, right? This happens right. in juniors and long drivers is what I've learned. Do you agree Big with that? Time. Big time. Because okay. well, we don't we're, we're, we don't want that to be okay for the normal. I mean, for me, right? Can you talk to that? Like, you're totally okay with this kiddo coming off the ground. Yes, one hundred percent. Now, if it let me jump. Can you see me? There we go. So, jumping off the ground is great as long as you maintain posture, maintain your your um, positions, right? If you're jumping okay. off the ground, you're doing this, you're coming out of posture, you're doing that, right? That's what I see a lot of the, well, the non-juniors, the junior golfers jump because the first thing that develops are their legs, right? So if you're telling them to swing as hard as they can, they're going to use their legs. It's going to, it's, and especially if he's a basketball player, he's definitely going to jump, right? So it's like, sure, yeah. it's kind of, it's kind of in your DNA. I'm going to have to kind of run with this, right? And it's great. Yeah. It's a great source of power. Um, but when he get, then he gets, because his dad's six, five, when he comes to be six, three, six, four, I'm like, I'm going to have to have a conversation with him. Like, let's start to stabilize that front side just a little bit especially with the irons, especially with the wedges, with the driver, you can let that thing go and get, get your clip head speed up to 120. That'd be great. But, um, for the general public, um, getting that front foot airborne, if you're not doing it correctly, it's probably going to hurt you. Definitely. Okay. Um, yeah. Great, great simple, answer simple to, to that. It. So <laughs> great. No, because it's true. I mean, we, and I've had so many coaches that I've asked this question to that totally justify it for kids that are good golfers. And, and for long drivers, and it creates power for the right scenario, but we don't want that to be the norm for the rest of us. So thank you for elaborating on that. I think it's really important. I've, I've had people look at traces and say, well, this doesn't look right. They're coming off the ground. Well, wait a second. It might be right for that student, right? It might be right, right. for that coach giving that to that student. So, um, like, but I love that you might. Students, you, students with tighter hips. Let's say I got a really tight hip coming in, lead hip. Um, I would like them to either flare their foot at the beginning or in the swing, get that foot to open up, right? That's just going to give you more range of motion in your lead hip, more rotation through the golf ball, easier to stay flexed versus extending early. Um, so in that case, if someone that's got tighter hips or something like that, then I might suggest, Hey, let's get a little airborne with that front foot. Let's open it up in swing or whatnot. And, um, again, if it's done correctly, it's a great source of power. If it's done incorrectly, well, it's going to probably throw some things off in the sequence of the swing. Um, but I think it's a power game nowadays, right? Everyone's talking yeah, about heck power yeah. game, right? Power I mean, equals distance, I'm, right? I mean, I'm starting to get my high school kids ready for the season in February. And the first thing we're doing for the fall is we're going to do a weight training program. So getting them limber, getting them mobile, getting them strong, getting them ready for the season. Um, yeah, it's something that needs to be done and if you're not playing and working out and doing all that stuff i'm sorry but you're kind of behind the curveball you're a little bit behind there just playing off talent alone can only get you so far nowadays with all the technology all the information out there um it's great to have it but what do you do with it that's that's yeah. the trick 
Such a great answer. Thank you. Thank you for that. I love it. It's awesome. Awesome. All right. Let's see a driver. Are we ready for a driver? Let's do it. Drivers are fun. Is this, I know, right? Is this the same kiddo ninth grader? Yep. What yep. is his same name? Kid. His name's Christopher Salem. He is a freshman at Maui, Maui Prep Academy. We'll have to send him this recording since we've totally analyzed That's all nice. of his golf swings. Let me see here. Before we go to driver, can we do a little little bump and run? Heck yeah, absolutely. Let's do a little. This is one that I wasn't too stoked about, but we worked it. All right, but we're trying to keep that pressure 60 and up on that left side, which right now it's just under, which I'm totally fine with. But as it goes back, he starts to get the shift, tiniest bit shift back. There's that shift forward. But we want to try to keep that thing locked in there. And then at the finish, he's always got this nice little lean back, which we're trying to get that out of his DNA. But he's got a little lean back there. Let's compare him to, why not compare him to moi? There we go. I, one, I like it. I did one right afterwards. Let's compare him to me. I this like is something it. that we worked on pretty strongly on that day. We tried to get that weight. Again, I call it honeycombing around that, that lead side. You can kind of see that oops, on that lead side there that my pressure never really leaves my front foot. It's always 60 and up, 69, 70, 70, 80, 90, 93, 95. But you can't tell that right now, huh? I mean, it looks like my back foot's down, my shirt's untucked. Right, but... <laughs> We're trying to keep that pressure on that lead side. And it looks like, I mean, we almost look like we're in the same position at the finish. Let me just fast forward to the finish here. Yeah. Right. Left and right. But without this technology, without, without this force play, we're not going to be able to see, hey, where actually is your weight right now? Are you leaning backwards? Are you leaning forward? Um, where is your pressure at? And that's more or less what I'd like to see him do there on that, on my side there is try to keep that pressure, just stand forward so that we can get this nice, easy, Descending blow in there. Just missed awesome. That one. Let's pull up another one. This is a um, little downhill flop shot. This is kind of at the end of the session the other day. And even more so, I wanted to really feel right now he's 75 25 on a downhill slope. So it's got to stay forward, right? It's going to be mm -hmm. hard to stay back on a down slope. And that's what's so good about this mat is I can throw it on a down slope, I can put it on an up slope and give me all this good information. But we're starting at 80%. All right, we're staying 80, 85, 84. There's impact. All right, just pass that. impact. And that thing's going straight up in the air. And then there's his little back lean. Yep. But honestly, at the end, if he's already hit the ball, it's not the biggest concern, right? Yep, you're letting that go. That. I cut that just short. That one, that one actually went in. No way. Oh. Yeah, it was, it was a downhill, downwind downhill lie that he flopped it nipped it perfectly and it went I mean, it had so much spin on it but keeping awesome. that pressure on that lead foot this is something that needs to be done if we're going to be good around the greens here we need to keep that pressure forward that pressure forward is going to allow us to hit a descending blow into the golf ball and then I'm also a friend of stalling the face open or keeping it open especially on a flop shot you got to keep it open on a flop shot but on a just a regular bump and run shot you're going to see that that face stays open as well right Right. You guys, um, one more little thing about this video. So Chris mentioned that he's taking it all over the course and he is absolutely using it uh, wirelessly and he's just throwing it down with his iPad in all sorts of lies. And boy, that is really powerful, right? Because when you're playing, you got to know what's going on in those shots. And so to just have that right. conversation in a lesson, fully mackerel. Well, I mean, well, what a great Stop. On the driving range, if you're just if you're just using it on the driving range, I think you're you're totally missing a lot of what this this um, product has this for you guys. It's it's great to use on downhill, uphill, side hills, in the bunkers, um, even on the putting green. I mean, I would say how how quiet can we keep our pressure in in our putting stroke? That's a great goal to have. Um, but um, yeah, it's it's a great piece of technology. You can use it all over from putting all the way up to drivers, which. I think everybody wants to talk about that right now. We want to see the driver. Let's see it. Wait, what do we got here? This question, Chris from Spain. 
Yeah, he's asked that in bunkers. Question. Of course, yeah. You throw that thing in the in the um, in the bunker. It's got the bottom of the mat where it's it's not really touching the technology at all, so it's protected from more or less. I, I, in the mornings, um, the sprinklers come on over here, and my mats get pretty soaked, pretty wet. So in the mornings, um, my mat gets pretty wet, and and during lunchtime, I kind of just hang it over and it drip dries and gets all the water out of it. And by some, by the afternoon, I'm, it's all dry, ready to go again. But um, yeah, I haven't had any issues of any wet or anything sand or anything like that getting in there. And yeah, I definitely throw it in the bunker. It's great. Heck yeah. So the mat is a uh, really nice doormat staple to the pressure mapping technology. The only thing I tell you is to not let people put um, stand on it with the old timey metal spikes. That will not be nice to the mat. Yeah. Other than that, get it dirty, get it wet, imagine. get it sandy. Yeah. Cool. All right. Let's jump back in there. Any any more questions? No. Okay. All right. Jump back into the screen share. That's one of my parents calling right now. I'll get that back in a little bit. And let's look at one that he pulled. So he pulled this one a little bit left, right? And it's pretty cool because in the tracers, we can actually kind of explain why he pulled it left just based off of this um this trace but how cool is that look at what he does we'll talk ourselves through this here so i mean this is something that i have to do every time and it's something that i think should be done we kind of talk ourselves through the shot where we're loading into that heel area ball of foot kind of ah, more ball of foot don't you see that All right i need a little 70 30 ball of foot yep. area yep i'm looking at the right grade numbers there and then now as we get into the downswing here notice how the heels don't really get engaged too much. The toes are super engaged still. Now the left toes are starting to push off. And the club's just ever so slightly above the plane. Club face just a tiny bit turned down. And then that one, that was probably like a 10 yard pull there. All right. He, he has, he's got a whole bunch of weight in his toes at impact. He sure does, right? And mm -hmm. what, did we, what did we talk about that? We were like, we don't like toes, right? We want to see that weight start to get off the toes, get into the heels, somewhere around the impact. Yeah. But I think that's one of the main reasons why he pulled that shot there. Um, kind of looking at the foot trace to mirror the swing path, if we get more of a heel to toe motion, right, going right heel, left toe, you can kind of imagine that's going from lower right corner of the box to upper left corner of the box, which would be kind of like an inside approach. Right? Mm -hmm. Where if we don't load that heel area, we're going to be more of a toe to toe. I can kind of see that in the motion here. We go kind of toe to toe. And that to me is going to be just producing more of an outside move. And which we see right over here is just the right over here is just the tiniest bit out. The tiniest bit. And in golf, that's all you need sometimes, just a little bit. Yep. Let's compare it to. There we go. The one we smoked. All right, we smoked this one. Last one was pulled. <laughs> Love the title of that video. <laughs> right. He came up with that title. <laughs> All right. So, so good. Look, I mean, look at the, the pressure trace difference already, right? You can kind of see that, oh, yeah. that X goes a little bit lower. It's not 100% into the heel, right? But again, he's a basketball player, right? Where do you jump from when you're a basketball player? Balls of feet, your toes, right? That's where we're jumping a lot of times. Mm -hmm. So, it kind of makes sense why that's in his DNA that we're not 100% loaded into the heel. But let's see how we do here. Closer, right? Almost yeah. a 60-40, oh, yeah. right? A lot better, yep. more uh, middle of the foot area. Mm -hmm. And then he drops it in. Ball of foot on the left side gets engaged. It's pushing hard off of that to fire that lead hip, getting around it. And then right over here, you see that's right on plane now. Yep. Holy mackerel. Right. Look at that. Oh, I wish my back had been that way still. So. I know. Wow. He's going to be out driving you next year. I'm sure of it. I was, I was expecting by the end of the summer, but I, maybe this, this weight training program by the end of December, <laughs> maybe we'll see. All right. But we'll take one more look here. Notice how his club plane gets a lot more slotted, more on line with that orange line because of where that pressure's going. It's going more heel to toe, back to heel. There you go. All right, all Gorgeous. Hands there. Really good position there. Really good. That's so good. 
All right. It's just, yeah, he's right about six or sorry, five foot nine and his dad's six, five. So it's going to be, it's going to be a fun four more years of coaching him into college and that lead side. But one thing that we're always going to be working on, and this is what I just had a junior ask me, coach, what, what's, what should I always be practicing? And it's always your chipping, right? Your chipping and putting. If you're a good chipper, right here, this is this is after this is at the end of the session. And notice how his pressure trace stays a lot more left sided. All right, 60, 40, 80, 20. Ah, that is so good. And then hey, no back lean. Or maybe I cut it early. We'll see. But he's got that weight staying a lot more forward than he did at the end of the session there. And that's, I mean, <clears throat> something that you can't replace when you're on the pressure mat, you can't really lie about where your weight is, right? You're like, mm -hmm. oh, I feel like my weight's forward. And I get that question all the time. It feels like my weight's forward, but I'm like, but your pressure shows you're our 60, 40 on your back foot, right? So what does it feel like when I push them over there and they're like, oh my God, I feel like I'm gonna fall forward. And that actually, that goes into my next drill. So something to do for short game and like bump and runs um, in that manner, I do a drill called the pretzel drill. And we oh, all know pretzels are all, they're all twisted up, right? Yep. Let me get a little bit lower so you can see my feet here. Let me put this down. I'm so excited with the drills. These are fun, not only good drills, but really fun names. Right. When you, when you teach a lot of kids, when you teach a lot of kids, we got to have some fun names. That's for sure. I love it. Well, that's right. the, and me. And you're teaching me. Oh, totally. I love it. <laughs> okay. The pretzel well, drill. Let's see it. Mandy, we're all kids, right? We're all kids. At Heck heart, yeah. Right. I'm totally. yes. Know, trust I've me. My boss, my boss tells me I act like a kid way more than an adult. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Never, never <laughs> change that. Never change that. So pretzel <laughs> drill, just like it sounds, we're going to be twisted up. So the back foot, the trail foot, is going to be twisted out in front right so i'm just putting that back foot just kind of just resting it ever so lightly on that front foot okay. ball position is going to line up right off of my front foot and as i make my motion back i'm not going to allow any bit of ooh, any bit of that going on because there's really not anything for you no support for you back there right but what yeah. i want to see is as you're going through is that that front foot kind of pushes down oh right? so it's kind like of like it. You ever play that game at the carnival where you got that line and you're trying to throw something into the bucket and you're like trying to just throw it in there ever so slightly? You're probably going <laughs> to yeah. keep the line, right? You're going to go over the line, right? Right. And that's right. kind of like how we want to feel like is when we're chipping is that we're kind of over that forward line so that we're tossing that ball into the bucket, right? Wow. I would I guarantee you that, that at the carnival that you wouldn't go like this to it. You wouldn't go like this. No, there's no not. way that you would lean backwards. Okay? It's, it's like a counter motion, right? It's a counter to the target, which a lot of golfers do that move, right? Where they're trying yep. to get locked on the club there, or they're trying to help it up in the air versus right? this 58 degree wedge should do just that. As long as my pressure stays forward, right? Keeping that pressure nice and forward, back and through, nice and balanced up to finish there. Right? That's always a good one. Just That's to get a great that pressure staying on that lead foot. Great drill. For us. That's a great drill. Love that. Anna, we're going to need to grab that one too, the pretzel drill. Save that. Yeah. Fantastic. Uh, what about putting? How often are you using it with putting? Putting? Um, honestly, I, I don't use it a lot more than I do with chipping with full swing and that and that sort. Putting, I've kind of done a few uh, seminars with T TPI and look, reading uh, Dave Phillips and Seekman and that type of stuff. And it's been more accustomed to me that putting is more just a visual thing, right? I mean, technique's technique and it's great to start the ball perfectly straight every single time. But if you don't feel the putt out, then you're really, well, you're kind of just like a machine out there. And there's not too many good golfers that are machines other than like a DeChambeau. Where he's probably the only one out there that kind of thinks that way. Um, I think Phil said it best in a Faraday uh, interview where he's like, you know, there's, you have to be really, really smart or really, really dumb to play golf well. And there are not a lot of smart guys on tour. And I was like, well, there we go. Let's dumb it down. It's <laughs> Phil saying it to dumb it down. Let's dumb it down. And, I love it. and it's, if, we, if we keep it simple, yeah, we can get things done. But when we start to get overly complex and try to get in our own way, our own 
thought process, it makes golf a lot harder when we're trying to do it that way. So I'm always trying to teach things as simple as possible. And I love it. That, and that's what that flamingo and that's what that, that pretzel drill does is it, it doesn't give you a more or less stable backside. It doesn't give you that back foot to push on to or lean back on. So it's like, hey, just kind of rip the bandaid off and let's yep. see how it goes. Take it away. <laughs> So we didn't talk about, there's other graphs in the pressure. There are linear and mm -hmm. dynamic vertical force. Now I'm a beginner golfer. So when we talk about those, I have to really, you know, think about what, if I were taking a lesson, what I want with that. Now you're, you're teaching a lot of juniors. Do you ever even go there? No. I mean, unless, unless I accidentally hit the button, yep. <laughs> it's, it's more or less, it's something that as a golf coach and I mean, teaching with track man or anything like that, it's more or less our responsibility as the coach to regurgitate the information in a understandable message. And if I throw these different graphs at you, they're cool. It's awesome. It, they do this. It does that. It does all these things. Right. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's like, yeah. it's awesome to watch. But if I go, all right, this is what we're doing linear. This, da, 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 and then the kid looks at me like, is he talking Greek or what's he talking about? Yeah. versus get your weight towards a target. It's like, well, okay, I can kind of understand what that means. All right, my toes, in, or my weights are in my toes. Okay, I kind of know what that means, right? Yeah. But keeping things simple, um, yeah, there's definitely something that I would like to get into, but it's more or less some, yeah, it might better be for that, uh, that physicist that's coming in. Well, for I'm with you. Or <laughs> the pressure mapping graph where it's red is the most and where it's not mm -hmm. is the least. I mean, that makes a whole lot of sense to me, right? That's it. And, right. and if Again, I can sync that, better. right, if I can sync that where you want it as my coach in real time with the swing, that's all I'm thinking about. I had somebody tell mm -hmm. me, you know, we want a lot of weight in our heels. So my thought is to just lift my toes up in my shoes. So that thought and your two pretzel drill and flamingo drill get me pretty close, right? To, to yep. moving my I weight. Love, I love the toes up drill. That's another one. Keeping the Heck toes yeah. up in the top of the shoes just to feel the weight in the heels. A lot of people get the weights in the toes because of the centrifugal force of that club going out in that manner there. There's, there's one base that's your, your hips and your butt really that keep you back yeah. and centered. Once that goes with it, which was that line that we drew, that vertical line that we drew, if we were checking to see if that's moving, well, then it's going to be kind of that outside move or that <clears throat> kind of that over the top move that you'll be seeing there. But um, right. yeah, it's, it's great to look at the traces and kind of imagine, okay, well, why did the club go outside? versus why they go inside and it's a lot to do sometimes with the trace. actually it all starts with the trace really if you look at the foundation of any building right you look at how that was built first and then from there uh, if we built it level then we can but if it was built sideways then i gotta kind of build this up build that right. up all right and that's basically the same thing in the golf swing is if the footwork's correct right if the pressure is correct then a lot of things above it with the sequencing is going to work out pretty good so that's what I love about this program too, is that we can use that to teach swing path. It's awesome. Heck yeah. Our feet are connected to the ground and our hands are connected to the golf swing, right? I mean, the golf club, like mm -hmm. those two things, mm -hmm. like make those happen well, and then everything else should um, work. We have a, a cool question from Marcella. Um, she always asks great questions. She read that you divide players by ability, sometimes moving much younger players up in age group to keep them striving. Um, what aspects do you look for in their video? And does the pressure mat also help in playing a role to determine when you move kids up? Did I lose you? Let's give Chris Use a second. I got you. Can now. you hear me? Yep. We got you back. All right. So I use the kids player pathway program to basically rank my kids. Um, it's a great program that goes from level one where they're hitting at 25 yards in the air to level 10 where they're shooting even par from the red tees. Um, it's a great program that kind of, I guess them step-by-step step, level one to level two, we have to hit it 40 yards and then we have to hit it 60 yards and it just gets a little bit more, a little bit more. And it's just, it, it's a great program because with, with it you get these pins and the, the kids they're just gung-ho they want to go and coach I'm going to make my putting pin today and it's like all right I get did you practice they're like yeah I practice all week my putting and I'm ready to go get my putting pin because if I pass my putting test then I go on to level three and it's great putting that responsibility and ownership on these kids and they know what they need to do to get to that next level and um yeah that U.S. Kids Pathway Program it's absolutely awesome I highly recommend it if 
any of you have um, programs in the area that your kids are interested in, jump, definitely jump on board with this. And any coaches out there that are thinking about doing any sort of junior program, definitely get that on that there. It's a, I'm basically, that's, that's part, part of the reason why my junior camp went from 12 to over 100 in the last year was Amazing. that they're 100% bought in because they want to get that pin for that next level. That's so cool. I love it. So anybody uh, maybe headed over to the drive, chip, and putt? Did he hear me? Chris, you got any kids drive, chip, and putting? I think we're losing Chris right here at the end. So guys, while I see if Chris drive, is- Drive, chip, and putt? Yeah. 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 Can you hear me? Yep, we got you. Oh no, we're almost done. <laughs> I mean, any any sort of junior program, U.S. Pathway, Chip and Putt, PGA Junior League, um, those are all great PGA run programs that you're going to have a class A professional out there with the kids working on their games and main thing is keeping it fun, keeping it engaging for the kids that way that they're really looking forward to going to golf practice that week. And it's something that they really look forward to um, versus the, oh, well, it's golf practice again this week. And I know they're just going to line me up and we're going to do certain, certain things. And I just got to keep it fun, keep it engaging, keep it, keep it light. Keep it fun. Keep it fun. All right, friends, um, please go support Chris on his Instagram page. He's great content. Um, obviously, the, the information he shared with us tonight is so fantastic. And so follow him on Instagram. His website has been posted in the chat window over there as well. If you have any questions for Chris or if you would like um, the videos of the two drills that we're going to pull out, which we are absolutely going to do. You can email me or Kelly, um, or of course you can email Chris directly, but I am promising you that I'm gonna beg him to join me again. We'll get an update on some of these kiddos maybe in the spring after they've been through their weight training. Um, and after, other than that, Chris, I know that you are um, just finishing It'd your lunch great. break. Be, I would love to get a little catch up on Chris. That'd be awesome. Heck yeah, heck yeah, that'd be so fun. We should have him join us live. And actually look mm -hmm. at his swings live yeah. since you're, you're, uh, I love to jump on again. That'd be great. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. But thank you for joining me today. I know this is your lunch break and you, I think you have a lesson right now in a few minutes and we are so grateful for your time and your, what you're doing to grow the game and how sweet you've been to all of us and sharing these amazing drills. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me, guys, and thanks for everyone staying up late on the East Coast to watch this. Uh, I'm going to go get back to work. But, uh, yeah, thanks again, Manny, for having me out. It's been a pleasure, and I look forward to doing it again. That would be awesome. Love to uh, we would love it. With Chris. We are so grateful to have you in the family. Aloha. And aloha. Aloha. Have a fun day. Cheers, everyone. See you next week. <laughs> thanks so much.